Today we're making sticker sheets. Hi, I'm Julianne and I don't, I don't know why I always do this. It's like impulsive. Anyway, I'm Julianne, I'm an artist. I have a sticker shop and I have been making sticker sheets for like three years now and I did a lot, like a lot of trial and error to get to where I am, where I'm now regularly producing and selling hundreds of sticker sheets a month. That being said, I am by no means an expert. This video is just about my process and how I do things. Everyone has their own versions of tips and tricks, but this is just how I'm doing it in the most efficient way for me and everything I've learned through all of that growing pain that I went through. <laughs> I'm just gonna be showing you guys how I do it. We're gonna go through all the nitty gritty of each step and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to make a sticker sheet with minimal disaster. <laughs> so when it comes to drawing, my personal tool is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And on it, I use Procreate, which is not free, but I think it's like only $10. And you by no means need an iPad this powerful. You do not need the iPad Pro, nor do you need the 12.9 inch. I have this because I got it on a really good deal, but you can literally draw on like any iPad as long as you have this, which is the Apple Pencil. And no, it does not come with the iPad. It's $129, cause- Capitalism is broken. And yeah, I take my iPad with me everywhere. I love it because I can draw on the plane cause I travel a lot, or I can take it to a coffee shop pretty easily. But then again, you can have a much smaller, less powerful iPad, Procreate still works, and that's all you need for drawing is you just need a screen and a pencil and you'll be okay. <laughs> if you're drawing on Clip Studios or Photoshop, then you probably have like a Cintiq of some sort, which is totally fine and valid. It's just for the drawing parts, the tips and tricks are gonna be a little different for you guys than they are for me. For cutting, I am a Cricut girly. Specifically, I have the Cricut Explore 2 and I have three of them which kind of makes it seem like I am like this huge Cricut fanatic. However, I have a very, very tumultuous relationship with the Cricut, but we can talk about that more later. There is a new version of the Cricut out. It is the Cricut Explore 3, and it has a lot of really cool and powerful features. However, it is out of the scope of what I need. I basically only make sticker sheets on my Cricuts. I don't do anything with like iron-ons or cardboard or anything like that. So I do not need the power of the Cricut Explore 3. And quite frankly, it is a lot more expensive than the Cricut Explore 2. The Cricut Explore 2 goes on sale a lot. So if you ever buy a Cricut, do not buy it full price because they go on sale like all the freaking time. Once you kind of have a vague idea of what you want to sketch, it's just time to just start sketching. You don't need fully fleshed out ideas. Part of the ideating process is just to just loosely sketch and figure out what you want from there. Once you get started sketching, you're going to need to create your artboard and your artboard size is going to be dependent on how big you want your sticker sheet to be. I'm going to leave some popular sticker sheet sizes right over here for you guys. Personally, I use 4.25 by 6.5 inches because I like like a bigger sticker sheet. Yeah, that means I don't get to put as many sticker sheets on a single sheet of paper. So my cost of production is a little bit higher than some other people who can fit more sheets onto a single sheet of paper. But that's okay with me because I like the aesthetic of the sizing of my sticker sheet. So the way I create my artboard from there is I just multiply the dimensions of the sticker sheet by a thousand. There really is no science to that. It's just that I want like a nice big daddy file. My file sizes are pretty hefty because not only are they, what, like 4,250 pixels by 6,500 pixels, but they're also 600 DPI and they have to be in CMYK because that's how your printer prints. So yeah, my files are huge. I do recommend 600 DPI. You do not need like that same amount of pixels. You can like adjust the ratio so that it's not exactly by a thousand. You can multiply by like 800 and still get the same result. It's just gonna be a smaller file size. <laughs> all right, now that we have all of our machines and programs figured out, it is time to finally get started with the actual first step of making a sticker sheet, which is to ideate and sketch. So this first step sometimes for me looks like just laying on the ground and staring at the ceiling. As an artist, I do that a lot. And sometimes from this process, just like a very perfect, beautiful, full on idea just, just comes to me. All right, I, I can like see the entire sticker sheet I know exactly what I want to draw. However, this only happens like 
2% of the time and most of the time I have a very vague idea. This is mostly just like hopping on Google and typing in things like autumn things and then I just look at a bunch of autumn things until I get an idea. So for today, we're gonna be making like a cozy autumn book theme. Again, like you can see, I don't have any idea of what I really wanna draw. So I'm just gonna look up a bunch of really cute stuff, pull a couple of pictures, and that will be my inspo for this sticker sheet. To actually sketch, I like using the brushes that come with Procreate. There are a ton of really great cute brushes that you can buy for like $2 or even like a dollar online. But for sketching, I just use 6B. As you can see, I'm sketching super messy and low-key ugly in this stage, but I'm really just trying to get into a flow state and let my creativity get onto the page. When you sketch super loosey-goosey, you have less attachment to the sketch, and so you're more willing to experiment and ditch ideas if they're just not good enough. And maybe you're thinking like, damn girl, I don't need all this explanation on how to sketch. But I know when I first got started sketching, I did not let myself be messy. I was being very, very meticulous about every single stroke, and I just wanted it to be perfect because I thought that's how real artists draw. And I mean, like some of them do, like if you're just like that talented, go f go you, good job. But if you're anything like me and you just like need to get all the chaos onto a page, that's totally cool. That's what this stage is for. We are gonna refine our sketches and draw in just a sec. Now that we have our rough ideas on the page, this is usually where I like to do some rough formatting to get a better idea of what my sticker sheet is going to look like. I already have a set background that I use, so I usually just import it, turn down the opacity, and then work on top of it. For your background, it really doesn't need to get too complicated. Some people just like having the title at the top and then designing around it and then adding in some cute details around the main stickers. This style of sticker sheet allows you to put more stickers onto a single sticker sheet. I personally like having a bit of a more detailed background. However, it does limit me in terms of the number of stickers I can fit onto a sheet. That being said, I know it's super obvious, but please don't copy my exact formatting. I really encourage you to explore different types of formats that speak to you and represent you as an artist. You know, like personalize it, add some pizzazz. Once I have everything sized and formatted to my liking, that's when I start refining my sketches and get to lining all of my stickers. After you're done with all your line work, that means we're on to flat colors. I usually use the lasso or select tool to just fill in the colors, and then I also group similar aspects of drawings together onto a single layer. For example, I have a bunch of pumpkins on this sticker sheet, so I'll have all the pumpkin flat colors on one layer. I also tend to use the same colors over and over throughout an entire sticker sheet to make things feel a little bit more cohesive. To shade, you can do a couple things to make sure you're coloring only within the shape. Firstly, you can go onto the layer itself and draw using alpha lock. This allows you to draw directly onto the layer and only on top of what you've already drawn. However, you're directly manipulating the layer itself, so you can't adjust your shading or erase without losing the flat layer underneath. Personally, I like using clipping mask, which is creating a new layer on top of the layer you want to draw on and then masking it to the layer below. This way you're shading and coloring within the shape without directly manipulating the original flat layer. have all your stickers drawn, it's time to outline your stickers. You could do this with a monoline pen, but I'm not very comfortable freehanding, so this is the way that I do it. First, I start by flattening all the layers and then duplicating and alpha locking the new copied layer. Then, you color the whole thing white and then duplicate again. On the newest copied layer, turn off alpha lock and use Gaussian blur just enough to where you want the border to be. You'll be looking for the fuzzy line and seeing how far away it goes apart from the actual sticker. Then turn off alpha lock on everything and combine the two white copied layers. 
After that, use the automatic select tool to use as a baseline guide for outlining. The way you do this is you select one sticker and then you drag the pen outward until you see the blue line, just enough to where you want the outline to be. Then you just tap on all the other stickers and color the whole thing white. And yeah, this kind of seems like very involved and might seem like a million steps, but it literally takes like five seconds once you get used to it and it makes outlining a lot easier because it gives you a guideline. Now that we have everything outlined, it's time to export. When exporting, we're going to be exporting the background layer and the sticker layers separately. But make sure when you're exporting the sticker layer that it has a transparent background. Once I have both the background and the stickers exported onto my computer, that's when I throw it up onto Photoshop and I do some light color adjustment because printers are really finicky and this is how I control exactly what comes out of my printer. I also like to have the corners of my sticker sheet rounded, so I use a clipping mask on Photoshop and I just export it from there. After everything is adjusted to my liking, it is time to throw it up onto Cricut. And this part is pretty easy. Basically, you just select new project and then click upload. And then you upload both your background and your stickers. Just be sure that you're uploading them with the highest resolution and also to select print and cut option. Once you have them both inside the Cricut system, it's time to add them both onto the canvas. Make sure you do this at the same time so that when you resize them to your sticker sheet, they resize together in the same ratio and you don't have to guess how big your stickers are compared to your sticker sheet. This is going to be the weird part for Cricuts because Cricuts cannot cut different lines at different depths. And this is an issue because we're gonna be printing two sticker sheets onto this one piece of sticker paper where the sticker sheets themselves have to come fully out of the paper, but the stickers have to be kiss cut to the sticker sheet paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trick the Cricut into cutting out our sticker sheets. So basically you just set your setting to cut kiss cut onto the sticker sheet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the background four times onto the same spot. That way the Cricut is gonna go over that background line four times and it's gonna cut that sucker right out. But when you're doing this, make sure that the background layers are stacked directly on top of each other. If they're not, then it's not going to cut fully out. And also you're going to have all these like weird little miscuts and like sticker frays coming off of your sheet, which is not what we want. We want a nice clean cut. So once you have all that set up, just select all the layers, duplicate, and then move over to the side so that the two sticker sheets are side by side. Then you select all the layers and click attach. And after this, you're pretty much done. Now you just save your project and then get on to cutting. Okay, now we are on to our fifth and final step, which is printing and cutting. And for printing right now, I am using the Canon PIXMA G7020. The Canon PIXMA G7020. <laughs> Printer names can never have like a nice, like easy name to say. It always has to be a freaking mouthful. But I love this printer. It is eco-friendly because it has like this mega tank ink technology. So I only have to buy ink like maybe once every four months. So like three times a year and I print a lot. I print like thousands and thousands of sticker sheets. So it's a pretty impressive uh, printer when it comes to ink efficiency. I do have two of them, not because I like love them so much. I do love them, but it's because they print really slow. So do keep that in mind as well. If you're interested in these printers at all, they're gonna be linked in the description box below. I have like all of my supplies linked there. So it'll be easy peasy for you if you're interested in any of those. And also, in fact, I think that they're on sale like right now. For sticker paper, I have been using online labels for like years now. Specifically, I use the Matte White, the standard white non-waterproof uh, sticker paper because I make like journaling stickers and they don't need to be waterproof. However, I am coming out with waterproof stickers soon. So keep your eye out for that. I love online labels, they're super reliable. I'll be linking them down below as well if you're interested in them. I used to buy their waterproof paper and produce waterproof stuff from home and they were indeed waterproof. I would put like the little vinyl thing on top and everything. However, when you produce waterproof stuff from home, it is not weatherproof, Aww. meaning it fades in the sun because we do not have like UV proof ink. That's something like only industrial grade producers have. So I have a manufacturer for all my waterproof stuff now. Just something to keep in mind. Once you have everything printed, that means you're ready to cut. And unfortunately, the cutting settings for me and for you are going to be different. Actually, between my three machines, two of them are on the same settings and one of them is on a different setting, depending on how new your blade is. This is something where you can't avoid the trial and error process. You'll just have to figure out what setting works for you. For my machine with the very, very new blade that's super sharp, I have to cut on paper minus. That is 
I think that is the setting it's on. And then the other two machines with the older blade are cutting on, I think, vinyl plus or iron on. Sometimes it is on iron on. And you just have to experiment with it. That's how you figure out where your machine's at at the moment. <laughs> So yeah, good luck figuring out what settings work for you. I know it's an annoying process. Uh, sometimes you're just gonna wanna like with your cricket. I have wanted to drop kick that thing so many times. The amount of times that it's made me cry is just a ridiculous amount. And that goes for the printers too, but that goes for like every printer and every cutting machine you'll ever work with. They will always try to make you cry. But yeah, after all those steps and hopefully minimal crying, you now have a sticker sheet. That was like a lot of talking and I hope this video was helpful. Again, all of my materials are linked down below and you guys now have my secret sauce, my formioli. So this should make your sticker sheet journey a little bit easier. Again, I might just be paranoid, but use this video as a reference. Your process might look different than my process and your sticker sheets should look a lot different than my sticker sheets. I know 99% of you guys get that, 99% of you, but there's always that 1% that just like, doesn't get it for some reason. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. It means the freaking world to me. Just check out my description box below for all my materials, my sticker shop, my socials. Follow me on there if you want to. Leave me a comment because I love the comment section. And uh, yeah, bye.